What's going on everybody? Gunner here and today we're gonna do the Mega Jerk. Um, and so, uh, that, you know, that's a, a pattern that's uh, kind of released maybe a year and a half ago on YouTube. So this is the updated version. Um, and, and that's what I want to drop one of my feathers. That's what I want to show you guys, the updated Mega Jerk. Um, and so what you're going to find in the description before we get started, there's going to be basically three links. Um, there's going to be a link to this fly swimming. Uh, you're going to see it in fast motion and slow motion and talk and, and see the action of how the fly physically runs forward, turns, jackknifes, and shows its profile on a strip retreat, right? So you're going to be able to see that. Um, the second link is going to be how to make the Mega Jerk dubbing brush, right? So this fly is based off of a custom brush that is tapered, um, you know, uh, kind of skinnier, sparser brush for the tail, bigger, thicker brush for the, the front hook and the shoulders, um, and kind of how this is built, because this is the whole fly basically, uh, there's going to be a link for that. That's a, a part of a series I did called Tie Like a Pro, and that's episode 6, part 1, so you're going to see those two links. The third link is going to be the old video, uh, because I still think there's some good stuff to take from the old video, so it's worth checking out also. Um, so yeah, those are going to be the three links. I'm going to also detail out all the color combos because this is I'm kind of I I've, I've wanted to do this color combo for a long time in my head because I fish the Northland and I got a whole bunch of tannic waters up here in this chartreuse copper uh, UV black back thing it's it's gonna be cool so this is uh, I'm freestyling the color so I'm gonna post that and and so you can check it out if you want um, so. I'm going to do all the updates. Everything that's different from this fly, the, the current version, from the previous version, we'll go over all of it at the end. Um, the way, you know, the, the thinking behind all of it, kind of the progression that it's, it's been in the year and a half of being able to fish it. Um, and then at the very end, we might toss it in the, in the fish tank and, and watch it swim. But really check out that link of it swimming. Uh, in, it's actually in Lake Superior. I filmed it like two and a half months ago. So uh, you can check that out. That'll, that'll give you a little bit better, uh, you know, kind of display of how it actually acts because you're getting to see it, you know, on the pause. Uh, the swim tank, though, will get a nice kind of profile and see how all those fibers move in the silhouette and stuff under tension. So I'll show you that, too. Um, now before we get started, and, and I want to go over kind of just stinger hooks real quick, because this pattern uses a, a 4 aught and a 6 aught Predator stinger hook from Arex. Um, and I, I just want to talk about stinger hooks. This isn't something I thought about. I typically choose my hooks basically by shank length, gap, and wire thickness. That, that basically accomplishes everything I want. Uh, the bend is just the bend. I kind of put up with it, whatever it is. Uh, but there's something really cool about these uh, stinger hooks and stinger hooks in general, but especially these A-Rex ones because they're a true stinger. Um, and I just want to I want to highlight that real quick for all you musky guys. So I'm gonna get zoomed in here, and this is a pretty long fly, so I don't want to zoom in too much. So that should be that's that's pretty good in focus right there. Um, and I'm gonna I know it's not centered, but that's gonna be okay. So I'm gonna loosen up my vise real quick. Grab that. So I just have a, a leader, a snap and a leader shoved on here so that I can I can show you what this does. But this is an Aberdeen hook, right? And Aberdeen is basically a perfect bend. This this loop back here is a perfect bend, and you can see my hook point is level. It's parallel to my hook shank, right? And when you go to set a hook with an Aberdeen, it moves down. Like you pull on this however many times you can redo it if you want, but every time you do it, it'll move down at an angle. You can see this angle. Now when you're fight when you're trying to set a hook. You're fighting that angle. You're, when you're trying to get your hooks to penetrate, you're physically fighting this wants to physically go down. You can see my, my line right here is, is perfectly level. That wants to go down uh, just because this is offset from where you're attached, right? And so you're, you're fighting that uh, when you're trying to get hook penetration. And when you move to a really thick wire hook, this is a, a 6 aught Predator Stinger. This is our front hook, right? thread this through real quick and what you can see is this is no longer parallel with my hook shank but it actually points to my hook eye like this is in line with my hook eye a perfect line to my hook eye and the reason why that is is so when you go to set the hook now that is perfectly penetrating parallel so like if, if a fish you know bites this you get just a little contact on the skin and you set the hook 100% of your pressure is going into driving that point home 
So that's what's cool about stinger hooks is your hook point is in plane, meaning that you can basically draw a straight line from your hook eye to your hook point. So even though you have a reduced gap, uh, not really a reduced gap, but you, you, you know how you're, you got a little bit of shank down below here, right? It's not as, it's not as sticky because it's not as open. Um, when you do stick them, you got a lot better penetration. So that's something that's really cool about stingers. So this is uh, updated from the old one. We have a 4 ot Predator Stinger in the back. It's going to add some uh, mass in the back. It's going to help the fly keel a little bit. Um, it's also going to give it a little bit more momentum and help it jackknife. Uh, but I'm getting ahead of myself because I said we were going to do all of those at the end. Um, and I'm tying with a 150 strand GSP. You can do whatever you want because uh, the dub room, you know, basically 150 GSP, 140 power threads. Um, any of that's going to handle the dubbing brush and everything we're going to do. So that's those are perfect. Um, I'm going to get this centered real quick. Well, more centered. It's not going to be perfectly centered because we're going to we're going to have a long tail here. So cool. So coming in for the tail, right? Um, uh, I've kind of updated this from a synthetic tail to a hackle tail, um, and I won't always do the hackle. Sometimes I'll do a flash tail, um, or I'll kind of hybridize them, which is what we're going to do today. Which is probably the most common. It's basically, you know, two big webby schlop and feathers, and then a bunch of magnum flash boo. Um, but when you do this, you really need a base. You need a base material because uh, your hackles, otherwise, they'll kind of like they'll almost bleed through each other and kind of follow up on each other. And when you put a, a stiff base down, they'll pair up and they'll move simultaneously together which is a lot that's what I'm going for um, it also stops them from wrapping around your hook bend so for my base and I put the packaging down I really like to do faux bucktail for the base um, because it's, it's long <laughs> and I don't want it to flare anyway um, and it's kind of the perfect stiffness to stop everything from following so it's a really great tailing material for your base here um, so I'm gonna you know it's a, a pretty decent amount Gonna give that a good clean cut, and I'm just gonna put a little bit of taper into it. Uh, this isn't necessary. I'm just OCD about tapering stuff, so I'm gonna taper it. You guys do what you want, but I'm gonna taper it, um, and I'm gonna basically use that at the full six inches. Um, but what you're gonna see is there's gonna be some waste because I tapered it, right? So I, I'm not gonna have a, a clean cut at the back here. But I'm gonna I'm gonna cut that vertical. So I got about six inches of, of tailing material, and I'm going to use a, a pretty good amount of hook shank to bind that down, and, and that's going to be kind of the base for my tail. And I'm not worried, I don't really care how much hook shank I use, it doesn't matter to me, um, but it's just going to, it's all durability. And use some solid pressure. So that's your tail, like six inches of, of stiff tapered uh, the materials but I also tapered it uh, tapered you know synthetic this it's really going to help everything pair up move simultaneously uh, and stop everything from following now I'm going to come in with my hackles and then I'm going to bleed my flashaboo throughout um, for hackles I found this sweet product now that hairline picked up uh, UV spirit river um, and it's called UV rooster cocktails these are the bomb these are the bees knees basically uh, you get eight to 10 inch schloppen feathers. Um, they have a really thick stem, so they're a little tricky to work with, uh, but they're also really durable. And this is probably a eight or nine inch feather right here. Um, so this, <laughs> these are, are crazy cool. Um, what I've also done, you know, you can, uh, wherever you find musky hackle, feel free to go for it. Um, but you can also use uh, basically just long saddle hackle. I'll just buy, Brewster saddles and, and you might get three or four feathers that are, are pretty practical that you can use and you might not It's kind of hit or miss, but I'm gonna pin these right on the side here Put some good tension down at that base and then wrap that up and make sure that whatever you do However, however you have to play with it. These stems are really thick So you might have to, to pinch them with your scissors flatten them out a little bit um, but you really want those vertical and kind of what I found from my old synthetic tails that I used to do is one these have a lot more natural movement to them which is beautiful um, and two from the side they, they carry a lot deeper silhouette with a lot less material so when your fly turns on, a, on its side a jackknife and you get that profile show you have this really nice 
tapered kind of silhouette that's bleeding down uh, that it's it's really hard to achieve without um, kind of using feathers so they're they're super perfect for this and then I just come in with some magnum flashaboo and I told you I'm kind of freestyling my color but what I have and what's in the brush it's solid uh, chartreuse and it's solid copper um, and I'm gonna do like I'm gonna do a pretty heavy on the flash tail you guys get get to pick and choose you know how flashy you want these flies how flashy you want the brush uh, typically when I'm fishing musky I, I usually don't use as much flash and when I fish pike I use a little bit more flash and that's just kind of my preference you guys can do what you want so I took that you know I cut these my hanks are at full length all 52 centimeters and I took that and cut it in half right so I'm at you know this is your standard length flash boo and I'm gonna taper that I'm gonna put a pretty good taper into it and I'm gonna lay that so that the tips of that hit the tips of my feathers catch that with a few clean wraps and then I'm gonna fold that back on top of itself now I'm gonna hit all that with super glue um, because <clears throat> the back of that fly is, you know, if a fish grabs this, his teeth are going to be all over that. So I want to protect all that thread here. And then once that glue is it's soaking in and it's still wet, I'll come in and run that all the way up there. And then so I don't have multiple super glue steps, I'll take my back brush and tie that into that wet glue and butt that right up to my faux bucktail base and run that forward. Now something you're gonna see me do when I I'm gonna I'm gonna palmer this in real time because I've had a few requests for that and it's it's uh, it's kinda tricky to do um, but you'll see me use a product to grab my wire from my dubbing brush and all this is and I'm gonna have to look it up real quick but there's uh, some products for epoxy wheels Right, you got a, an epoxy drying wheel that'll spin around uh, so your epoxy won't drip, basically, is the purpose of it. And they make gator grips that you stick into the foam wheel that grab your flies that stop stuff from dripping. They're called Flex Coat Pin Clips for Big Wheel. <laughs> I'll put that in the description so you guys don't have to remember that. But that's where I got these from. Uh, you can also find big gator grips like this at like Menards and hardware stores, but uh, gator grips are, are probably the best for grabbing onto your dubbing brush and keeping it so that it's, it's manageable. So I'm going to grab my wire there, and I, I, I pinch on top of that gator grip so you can see my gator grips on the wire. I also pinch down. Uh, they, they don't really hold it well enough for how much pressure I'm going to put on this. But you can see I'm drawing all of my brush, all you know, super long, big fly fiber wings. And again, you can find this brush. There's a link in the description on how to make this brush. It's called the Mega Jerk Brush. And I'm going to walk it forward. And this is, this is my favorite thing about a rotary vise. Um, because having to hand over hand a big bulky brush like this is a really big pain in the butt. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think I'd enjoy that nearly as much as being able to walk that around. You can see how much pressure I have on that. You might even be able to see my hook like literally deflecting. Ooh, I got a text message. And these are, you know, these are nice kind of, they're not super aggressive, but they are open spiral wraps. I'm even going to, I'm going to turn this off right quick. Yeah, that lighting's, see, I'm going to leave it off. I need it for tying, but I'm going to leave it off to finish this. Um, so you can try to see just how nice open those wraps are. And when I get towards the eye right here, what you can see is I'll start bulking up. I'll start doing more kind of touching turns uh, and really help that teardrop shape form. You don't need to, you know, you can move it up move it up your hook shank and, and, and kind of bridge that gap and as you get to the hook eye you can kind of dent it up, do some touching turns, build a nice kind of dense collar that's going to taper back so that when you tie this off you know that back hook is kind of one and done like this doesn't take a lot of skill to just palmer this forward and I got this brush slightly overbuilt here, I need my light again, sorry 
you come in with a, a bodkin, clear a path for your thread to go. That way you're trapping this down straight on the wire, right? And that's all about durability. I like to catch it two, tw two times. Uh, two times is kind of the best. If you can support your hook eye with your fingers, give that some solid pressure. Let go and preen it back. And the two times and then pressure before you let go, it stops anything from slipping and backing off and keeps you in solid contact with that. Pinch that. I leave a tag end wire right there. I always leave a little tag end and then tie on top of that tag end so that brush can't ever get pulled out. And then I got a nice little thread base at my hook eye that I'm going to reverse tie Steve Farrar flash blend. And Steve Farrar is probably my favorite uh, and my most consistently used winging material for mega jerks. Um, it's basically my, my tried and true for creating the silhouette and, and having the bulk that I want. So you can see that's our tail. <laughs> like super simple, super easy. I have quite a bit of Magnum Flashaboo uh, in this one for that color blend that I wanted to try which is pretty wicked. Um, so my SF blend, this is actually UV black, which is super sexy looking. Going to come in with slightly, you know, a sparser amount on the back than the front. And what I'll do is I'll measure this down the back of my fly, probably uh, maybe three quarters of the way. Three quarters is pretty good. And then I'm going to leave. This is so I, I measured it three quarters, right? You got you got three quarters down the back of my fly, and I have this tag end right here. And I'm going to leave about two inches. Come in here, taper this. When you make a taper in synthetics, you should run that up and then apply that to the rest of the material. And then I'm going to run that straight back. Kind of distribute that over the top by shoving your thumbnail into that that stack right there and that'll veil over so that you get a really nice veil over your back. And I know that, that black doesn't show up that well under the light, but you'll see this here in a second. And then I fold that back and bullet it. And I like to keep it right on top for the most part. Come down to your hook eye and whip finish. This tutorial, <laughs> I can't talk. This tutorial is going to be a long one because I don't want to leave any stone unturned here. We're going to hit literally every topic. So that's my back. Comb that out. It helps bleed that that short stack into the the long wing here. I'm going to hit this with glue, and then we're going to get this articulated. That's my tail hook. Check out, like, look at that teardrop silhouette. Going back, we got a two-tone, dark top, white belly, chartreuse and copper flash, bleeding into my hackle tails. This is this right here is probably an eight and a half inch fly, right? And we're gonna articulate this. Uh, this is a four-aught predator stinger in the back, and we're gonna put a six-aught predator stinger in the front. Now, the way I've been articulating these, if you watch the old tutorial, I use something that's, well, I use my beetle on, which is about 40 pound, nylon coated stainless steel and something about that beetle on is it's never pulled out and I've never had it pulled out but it will break it will give eventually whether that's you know 10 fish or 50 fish or whatever it is but unfortunately it will break um, and so what I want to do is I'm, we're gonna build a custom shank and this is something I've been playing with uh, for maybe a month and a half or so and it's in the bill shear style uh, that's who I learned it from, and there'll be a, a fourth link in the description to Bill's video. Um, and what I'm going to build it out of is a 180 pound Malin hard wire. This is single strand stainless steel hard wire. I'll put this in the description as well so you guys can see it. Um, you can use 280 pound, but it, it fills up your hook eye and you can't get snaps and stuff in there, so it's kind of a pain. Um, so if you like to fish snaps, stick with the 180. If you build a leader per fly, you can do the 280. It's just going to be slightly uh, stiffer and less prone to being kind of kinked in the back. So I'm going to walk you through how to build this custom shank. Uh, you're just going to need some basically needle nose pliers, uh, jeweler's pliers, sorry, uh, with round, round edges and some wire cutters. But before we do that, I'm going to add some keel weight. Now this fly doesn't need keel weight 
to keel uh, if you're going to fish it in still water. Um, it doesn't really need it and if you're going to fish it kind of uh, moving water from a boat. But if you're fishing rapids, if you're fishing fast water, if you're fishing a uh, river on foot, this, what it, it, what it basically does is when you don't do it, the fly will have some belly wobble. And that belly wobble is nice. It's actually a pretty good trigger. But the belly wobble uh, basically takes energy away from the turning effect is what it does. Because uh, this, this front hook is big enough to keep it keeled, the back hook is big enough to help keel it, the fly will track true basically no matter what, but that belly wobble takes energy away from the jackknife. And so when you keel this, when you're adding a little bit of mass, uh, so you got a little bit more momentum to overcome the water or the, the, the water drag on the fly, which is nice. Um, helps the fly kind of sit back a little bit so it has more of a kind of a pivot point so the front jackknife's a little bit better. Um, but it also keeps that keeled more steadily so that you have less belly wobble and more energy going into your turn. Um, so you can play with, you know, it'll depend on how much you want and how, how much you want it to turn for your style of fishing. But I'll just take, and this is 030. Uh, and that's three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So that's like, oh, that broke off. That's fine. We got like nine, maybe ten turns of 030 right on that bend. Okay, I don't like that. And just really mash that on there pretty good. And it's right perfect on my bend, below my, my shaft right there. Really easy to tie in. You might be able to slide that down. I got quite a lot of pressure on that. And I haven't done this a, a billion times. I don't really have a, a set way of securing that. But this is just some monofilament thread. And I'll come over. And just kind of put locking uh, thread bumps kind of on either side of this. And then I'm going to walk my thread through that. And then I'm going to hit all that with super glue. So this mono is just to stop it from slipping, basically, is all I'm trying to do. If it ever wanted to slip and slide, it's not going to now. And then I'm going to hit all that with super glue and let that dry while I walk you guys through this shank. I'm going to get that a little bit out of my... <laughs> I don't want this to drip on my vise at all. Super glue running down your vise is no bueno. You can hit that with UV resin, you can hit that with epoxy, you can hit that with whatever. But with that mono on there to, to kind of bind that down so it can't ever come undone, I'm pretty happy with <clears throat> just using super glue. So I'm going to come in, this is 200, or not 200, 180 pound, single strand, stainless steel. I got about 5 inches, which is more than I need, but it'll keep it easy for me. And what you want to do here, Come in with your jeweler's pliers, so the, the round nose pliers. I'm going to take this, you know, I got maybe two inches of working room up here. I'm going to put a kink in that. You can see that right there. So that's no longer perfectly vertical. I got a nice little kink in that. I'm going to form a loop. Basically, I got a, a loop. I know this is... Uh, basically, just watch Bill Shear do this. <laughs> he'll, he'll do a better job teaching this than I will. I haven't done this enough to, to really teach it that well. But I'll show you the final shape here that you're really looking for. Um, and basically, this is what you're looking for. You can see I have a nice open loop right there. Um, my loop is kind of offset from itself. I'm going to tie this straight down on top of the hook here. And what I like to do is I'll come in with pliers right on top and close that so that's sealed uh, basically from opening up, right? And you don't need that long of a tag end. If you flip this up, you know, I basically, actually, I'll leave that tag end. I don't need it that long, but I can leave that tag end pretty long. It's never going to open up whatsoever, but you can see how long that, that tag end is right there. And then you just want to measure this. I'm going to reorient this because this is kind of hard to do in my head here. I want that right there. That's where I want it. I'm 
grab that, put a solid bend back in that, and then what you want to do is, I find it easiest if you trim the wire first. Come in with your pliers again. Close that loop, not all the way. That way you can slide that in, pull that back, and we're going to be able to tie this down now instead of having a 40 pound, uh, you know, multi stranded wire connection. I have a single strand, 180 pound. It's bent through the eye, it can't ever get pulled back. Um, I have, you know, a two inch shank to bind down and close that loop. My loop is closed, so my fly can't really foul. Um, and that's, that's how we're going to articulate this. <clears throat> so now we got our shank built. Um, and, and in fact, I might cut a little bit of that out. That didn't, it wasn't super clear on my, my part from a teaching perspective, but just follow the link uh, and watch how Bill Shear does this. Um, he explains it quite a bit better, but that's the shank, and it's out of a 180 pound single strand. Um, so what I wanna do is I wanna start my thread, get a good little base down here, and then we're gonna insert that. And I like to put my fly in it first. I'm gonna put my, my back hook in this custom shank here. That way when I thread this through the hook eye, I can pull on this really hard and get a nice tight wrap right up to that hook eye so that my hook eye has, you can see through it, you can see my sweatshirt through my hook eye. I have a nice open hook eye that I can fit, you know, snap through for changing flies quickly or however you like to rig it, um, but it just it stops it from filling up that hook eye is basically all I'm doing there. Put some good thresher, pressure down. You gotta be super careful around these, these wires here. Close my loop. And so I have my wire is perfectly on top of my hook shank. I'll wrap down a little bit so that this, the hoop is actually in line with my hook shank. Everything's in line, everything's straight on top. My loop is perfectly vertical. Um, these kind of custom shanks are, are seriously awesome for doing this. Really low following, super stupid durable, it's never going to give. Um, and if you put some serious pressure back here, use a lot of thread and we're going to coat that with some super glue. Uh, it's, 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 you know, you just quadrupled the lifetime of this fly compared to using wire uh, in, the, in the sense that I've, I've used it previously. So I'm quite excited about these. I think they're I think they're the real deal. <clears throat> so I'm going to hit this with super glue, coat all of that, and then tie in my brush in that wet super glue and walk that forward. Cool, cool. So I got my brush tied in, my glue's pretty much dry. Wrap that forward again, coming in with this kind of pinwheel gator grip. I'm gonna hit my hackle here. And you'll see this front brush is, is quite a bit, it's, well, it's a lot bulkier. Uh, it's designed to push water. Um, and, and I'm gonna walk this forward uh, fairly aggressively here. And I zoomed in a little bit so that you guys can see this with some better detail now that that super long back hook is done. Back in the day, I, I used to, if you ever watch my videos when I'm tying on a peak and stuff. <laughs> I used to tie on pedestal bases a lot um, and I loved them and I, I still like them but uh, when I, I tie my brush my brushes in I, I pull these so hard because I want them to be super tight to my core and I want them to be wrapped really consistently and I'm trying to build a durable fly. I used to like basically pick up my entire vise by the base and drag it around the table <laughs> when I palmered my brushes. So I've moved to a C-clamp and I freaking love it. I think C-clamps are the bee's knees, but just something to consider. If you get into brushes, you might really like a C-clamp. So I'm getting right here to the end. You can see how much room I have left at this hook eye. You really don't want to crowd the hook eye. We're going to do a stacked, a stacked strung fuzzy fiber head here. Um, after we and we still need room for our, our top stack of Steve for our blend. So this is going to get a little messy on me, but you just gotta you gotta will it into being. You gotta catch that wire twice, getting your materials out of the way. Let go without anything slipping, and get some threads down. You're good to go then. 
come back over catch that for a third and fourth time and then what I'll do is I'll cut this with my wire cutters I'll leave a tag end and I'll just push that into the side of my hook here and and wrap that down that way then you're good to go now like anything you're using these brushes you really gotta comb it out um, and this is, I, I couldn't believe it, I taught, I taught a whole bunch of classes uh, down in, in Chicago and, and over in Michigan and, and uh, I use a brush in like every fly. This is like a, a 99 cent brush from Walmart that's lasted me, I don't know, six years now. Just next time you're in Walmart or, or Walgreens or Rite Aid or whatever you do, just buy a brush. This, you can use a bodkin but this will save you a lot of time. And what I'm going to do is, I'm going to come back and put a little a little thread dam in front of that there just to help tame some of that down so you can uh, play with this how bulky you want it how much water push you want it basically the water push is going to allow the fly to swim when you strip it that water is gonna you know have to move and recollapse and, and all of this tail is kind of in a negative uh, slipstream hydraulic and it's gonna allow it to swim uh, so the more water push you have the more swim you get but that waterproof is creating a cross-sectional surface area that is adding friction. So the more uh, bulky this front brush is, basically the reduced jerk action you're going to get. So there's compromise there, and you have the ability as the tire to play with that. How much do you want, basically, um, in, in terms of swimmability when you're stripping it, or in terms of glideability when you're jerk stripping it in between on that, on that paw. So you have the ability to control that. Um, I typically, I'm going to wrap that back and collapse that a little bit. I usually, I don't know, I, li I like a happy medium. Um, it doesn't bother me either way. I'm going to leave it nice and bulky, but you can control that uh, basically by how much uh, this is supreme hair. The supreme hair is your shoulders, uh, and that supreme hair is going to control that, that bulk and that water push and, and give you that, that silhouette and everything you want to swim the fly. I could find my SF blend here. So I'm going to come back in with the, the UV Black Steve Ferrar Flash Blend. I'm going to use quite a bit more than I used on that back hook. I want a nice broad uh, wing that's going to be uh, fairly saturated in terms of color. I'm going to walk that back halfway down my back wing. It's right here out of frame. That's halfway down my back wing. I'm going to leave two inches as my tag end again. That's just something I do. I like to leave that two inch tag end and then taper that. You can taper it in a pretty good way. That's maybe like a three inch taper from my, my base to my tip here. And apply that taper to all those fibers. Stick that sucker on top. Try to keep it nice and vertical on top and then just tap it so that it slips down either side of your hook there. Get a nice clean veil over the back of that fly. And what you can see is I, I kind of caught it up front here. You can see my thread wraps. And then I wrapped it back. And that creates a really nice valley right here, right? I just created a valley that I can flip this back and catch that. And now my thread's not going to slip off that. So I had this nice little thread bump right here keeping everything in place I can control that wrap that back and I'm going to use this very bump to add my my lateral line flash and this is a place you know if you want to add soft tackle pec fins um, this is this is the place to do it you got this nice vertical cleaned bump right here and a nice surface area to add pectoral fins uh, for a little bit more realism so you can mess with that uh, stuff's down here I'm coming in. These are uh, dyed over pearl lateral line flash from Hedron. This is black dyed over pearl. Super cool color. And then I'm just going to tie these in 60 40. I'd talk through this, but I have one of them in my mouth for the time being. But the easiest way for me to do this, I always wrap it around my thread, and then I basically just make sure the tips are not the same length. And that's how I justify it being 60-40 is that the tips are not the same length. And that's good enough for me. 
<laughs> and I just, I like to pin them right on the side and I like to use just one strand doubled over each side. I think it gives it a really nice clean look and, and that, that flash cuts through the water really nice in terms of uh, being able to give a lateral line effect, which is the whole point of it. That's what, the, that's what they named the flash after. <laughs> um, so I'm going to come in and just super glue this thread bump right here. Keep all that good and secure. This is a big toothy critter fly, pike and muskie, and I want it to last for as many fish as I can afford it to last for. And what we're going to do for the head, and this is something I've recently been doing, and I am absolutely in love with it, and it's doing a stacked strung fuzzy fiber head. Um, especially, and you'll see this if you, if you follow the link to the swimming video, when I take that fly out at the end and I'm talking and I show it to the camera, you, the dubbing collapses basically as soon as it gets behind the eye. The tallest point on that fly is gonna be the, well, it's gonna be the shoulders, but the dubbing collapses as soon as it gets behind the eye. There's no structure to it. You know, the dubbing is, it's dense enough at the core that it can support itself, but once you get up about an inch, maybe even half an inch, the dubbing doesn't have anything to support it, and because it's viscous, it just collapses. Uh, but the strung fuzzy fiber, I'm able to create a super accurate silhouette and you'll see it in the swim tank whatever silhouette you give it it holds in the water period like it's super uh it self supports itself because of all the crinkle um basically whatever shape you give it, it's the shape it's going to hold and no matter whatever the current is, is the shape is the shape so you can create a really nice accurate tall silhouette and sail uh and it doesn't hold any water so it's super castable uh, for how bulky that we're going to make this head and this fly you know this fly when you take this and roll cast it once, it'll be this dry. Aside from the tail, we have hackle on the tail. If you did a flash boot tail, this is how dry it would be. You roll cast it once, there's no water absorption. Um, and it's because I took, well, the, the big fly fibers, uh, it doesn't absorb water, but the curly big fly fiber used to trap water because uh, water has a lot of surface tension and that's all pretty dense in there. Uh, but now that I moved from the curly big fly fiber to straight supreme hair, which is just stiffer, the, the core of that brush is straight, so there's the water surface tension can't hold itself. This thing sheds water like a dream. You roll cast it once, and I mean, you touch it, and it, it feels like this. It feels like this. It's crazy. So, and the strung fuzzy fiber does the same thing. So we're getting a nice, tall, bulky, ultra-realistic uh, three-dimensional head with a sail uh, to get the jerk fly action and no water weight. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to blend my uh, strung fuzzy fiber with Wingin Flash. Uh, these are head round products. Uh, it's, it's basically angel hair flash, right? I'm gonna blend that with angel hair flash. Uh, it's called Wingin Flash. This is dark brown and this is, uh, might be fluorescent yellow or chartreuse. Uh, I think it's yellow. Um, and what you wanna do, and this is gonna be hard to show you guys, but I'm gonna take strung fuzzy fiber at full length. I'm gonna stack black on top and I'm gonna do the yellow cream on the bottom here. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut this into quarters so I have my full length here. You can see my hands right at the edge of the frame. Cut it in half, and then I'm gonna take that, cut that in half. So physically the fibers are in quartered, but I have, this is uh, basically Man, I'm trying to think. This is two quarters, if you will. Like I cut it into, it, I cut the full length in half. Then I took that half, cut that in half, but I saved them. I didn't pair them. That's going to be my first stack. That's going to be my second stack. If that makes any sense, I'll show you again with the cream here, so that we're all on the same page. And I want this to be overly dense because I'm going to trim it all. If you overdo this, it's totally cool. Uh, you're going to trim this whole head. So I got this folded over in half, cut pair that. So I just mushed all that together, everything I just cut, and then I'm going to cut this again in half, but I'm not going to pair it, and that becomes your first stack, and that's your second stack. Does that make sense? Cool. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to lay these on my table, so you guys aren't going to be able to see this part, and I'm going to skip it, and I'm going to take my wing and flash, and I'm going to, this is just for fun, you, you can skip this step, I just... This flies for me, so I'm having too much fun with it. When I take my wing and flash, I'm going to take a pretty good amount. I'm going to cut that in half, and then I'm going to rip stack that into my strong fuzzy fiber to blend it. That's all you need to know. I'm just going to rip stack it to blend it, and then we'll uh, come back in here and stack this up. 
This is what I mean by rip stacking. So I'm, I'm literally just pulling the fibers apart and putting them back together. And what it's going to do is it's, it's going to bleed. And every time I put it back together, I rotate it like a, you know, 30 degree turn or whatever. But what it's going to do is it's going to bleed all of that wing and flash in there. So we have a nice kind of saturated flash to this. And it's also going to taper the ends naturally. It's just going to taper the ends. So what I'm going to do is stick that right on top here about 50 50 keep it top and bottom nice and low profile move over to the bottom just you know it's not obviously I said you know you want to if you want to use a good amount because we're going to trim all of this at the end um, but obviously overdoing it's still overdoing it so don't need to overdo it but I stack that on the bottom bring your thread up and you can see how much shank length I'm using to build this head. I'm using a ton of shank length. And it's because I'm going to use all of this for my, my eyes. So if you have extra shank length at the end, that's no big deal. You definitely don't want to rush the head because this strung fuzzy fiber, it, it builds super easily. And it's, it's really easy to hide all of this and fill all this in. Um, but to use it, you know, if you crowded the hook eye, it would be difficult to get it all in place there. So. So again, I'm just going to stack that straight on top, 50-50. Keep some good pressure on that. Go right up to my hook eye. And then I'm just going to put a little thread bump up here. It's going to force all that back. If I wasn't using GSP, it'd build a little bit better. But there you go. Come in, catch that with a half hitch, catch that with a whip finish. You know, you're solid. Sweet deal. Now you want to comb all this out and you'll see how crazy bulky this is. But in about, I don't know, 20 seconds is going to make a lot of sense to you guys, I hope. So <laughs> compared to dubbing, do you see how much more bulk this is? And I probably used, I would have used equal amounts, I would think. It would be pretty close, comparable. And what you want to do, well at least what I want to do, this is how I like to tie it. Come in with your scissors and you don't want to go too far back with your blades. But I'll highlight this for you guys once I get this the way I like. But I'm going to come in. That might be easier if you if you take the blade uh, this way towards the camera, away from you. Uh, you get a nice clean cut because I don't want to I don't want to go back and trim back here and kind of where the head becomes the wing. Uh, I don't want to screw with that. I just want to get these fibers up here, right at my hook eye. So you might have to mess with this, get this to look the way you want. But what I'm doing is these fibers are, are really far away from my hook shank. And I want to, we're going to do a, a five minute epoxy head on this. And a five minute epoxy head is, is kind of, I've found to be the most durable. Um, and it also gives the head a little, the, the head of the fly a little bit of weight and helps it break the surface tension so you're fishing immediately. Um, also gives it a little bit more momentum on the, on the strip and the paws and the glide. Uh, it's really awesome and it's super easy to work with and now you're not screwing with you know tear mender on a half inch eye I'm back that was a long phone call my apologies so we got this head right and uh, yeah basically I cut it flat I cut it flat on the sides so that you can get to the core of the fly you can get to your hook shank and what we're gonna do to build up this head uh, and secure these eyes super durably and, and this is something I've uh, kind of learned from Nicholas Bauer and this is how he builds his jerkfly heads which conveniently is who I learned jerkfly heads from in the first place so that's come full circle in about three years now but I'm gonna use Zapagap Z epoxy five minute epoxy Zapagap five minute formula and what's really nice you take like a, a piece of this is from an A-Rex hook package just some a piece of cardboard to squirt the epoxy on and uh, I'll use a pretty decent amount. I know this is kind of vague because you guys can't see this. 
Actually, I'm gonna get my tripod out and give you guys the over the shoulder view uh, so you can watch me do this epoxy head on here. Check that out. I'm gonna put two nice dabs down, right? So you, you want equal parts here. Uh, and I'm using quite a bit more than I, I actually physically need to. Um, and it's because I'm going to I'm gonna build this up a lot, you guys. There's going to be a lot of epoxy in this. And I want it to basically saturate all the way through the diameter of my eye from one side to the other. And the head weight helps it, one, it gives it some momentum on the jerk. Two, it helps it slip under so that it's fishing immediately. So I quite, I like, I like using a little bit more than I need. Uh, so you're going to put both of those on there, take your bodkin and mix them together. And they come out of the bottles clear, and you'll see when you mix them they'll get really cloudy, um, and then they'll clear back up. And once they clear back up, that means you're basically good to go. And I'm going to take, uh, I'll wait for it to get clear, but I trimmed this flat, right? I trimmed this close so that I can, I can basically feel my hook, my hook in there, um, and I'm trying to create a nice low profile head. And I'll take this epoxy, this five minute epoxy, I'll take a pretty good dab here, and I'll put it right on the core of that, that hook, and I'll work it into those fibers with my bodkin. Like I'll literally push it in through the strong fuzzy fiber all the way to the core of that fly. And you can use a pretty big drop at a time, you don't have to be shy with this. But you want to keep it the diameter of your eye. I'm going to come in with half inch. Uh, big fish 3D eyes. So you don't want to get bigger than half an inch, right? And you want to keep it uh, kind of the same diameter of your eye right here at the hook eye. And really just work it in. You want to work it in both sides. You want it nice and even. You want it to penetrate all the way through and through so that you're gluing these eyes together. You're gluing these eyes to the hook shank. You're gluing these eyes, you know, you're, you're trying to, this is a stupid durable head. Um, just wicked durable. These eyes are, are stuck on here for a good long while, if not the lifetime of the fly. So work this in there. Get this nice and deep. Get that all the way to the hook. That way when we put these eyes on here, I'm going to pinch them. And I, I hold them in place because this, you know, I'm working this in there and this takes quite a bit of time. Um, I'll just hold them in place and, and wait for it to set up. So I won't make you guys wash that whole thing because it takes, you know, it takes five minutes to set up, plus or minus a few seconds depending on your ambient temperature. So that is what it is. But I work that in, fill this up, get this good and thick and goopy, and it, it doesn't really start tacking up until you hit about five minutes, and then it'll tack up really quick, and you'll feel it set through the eyes. You'll feel the heat from the epoxy set everything and what you want to do this is something to be aware of when you're doing this you don't want to put your eyes too close to your hook eye or else <clears throat> it's going to be really hard to trim your head to the shape you want so and I'll show you what I mean I'm going to take these off I'm going to rest this on this epoxy here and you can see that, like I have, you know, the base of, I have like a whole hook eye back is where my, my eye is starting. A whole hook eye back is where that eye is getting placed onto that head. Nice and thin. I got good clean color separation. Put the eye on the other side. Ooh, don't want to glue that to myself. And you got working time, you know, the, the five minute epoxy, you got five minutes here, it's workable you get those eyes wherever you want them push them in the the five minute epoxy is going to seep out around the edge and maybe even coat the edge um, it's going to help seal that in there for durability everything's about durability and then what I like to do is I'll literally pop this out of my vise and because I don't know I've been talking and working with this already for three minutes or whatever I only have to hold it in place for like two minutes but I'll quite literally just pinch these in my hand, work, work, work with these fibers, get that to lay back, get that to lay back, hold those right where I want them. So that's good to go. These are all set in place. You can just see 
but basically how big of a, a profile that is. It's just <laughs> absolutely huge, uh, which is a good thing. But what we get to do now is, uh, you know, before you kind of had to use the perfect amount of dubbing, and even then it only get to the height of the eye and then collapse. Uh, now you can kind of come in, loosely comb this out, and then we're going to trim this to the exact shape you want. Uh, so you have really a lot of freedom to make the fly as, as perfect as you want right right now at the end here. So I'm going to come and cut this flush. I can't really see. There we go. I'm trying to I'm trying to get a good angle for you guys on the camera, which is hard to see. Come up, contour that eye. I'm actually going to use my normal scissors. So moving your eyes a little bit back from the hook eye is what gives you the freedom to really sculpt and shape this to the shape you want. Uh, at least in my opinion, if you, if you put them too close to the hook eye, which these are, are close to the hook eye, they're not, you know, I'm, I'm talking like an eighth of an inch here, but if you get them too close to that hook eye, you, you, you lose the ability to shape this. And of course, I'll sit here and trim this forever because I can't help myself. You certainly don't need to. <laughs> I just, I want it to look a certain way. But something that I think is important to know uh, as you're doing this, you really want uh, symmetry between the top and the bottom uh, to get the truest ride, to get it to track the best. Um, it's all, you can almost kind of create like a diver bug, like it's not a true diver, but if you leave too much material on top because it holds its shape, it'll literally cause the head to dive down because you got so much water pressure built up on this front head that it'll, the fly will move away from that built up water pressure that stacks up. So it's really important to keep it symmetrical to get it to ride uh, true in the jerk because you want it to, to turn sideways when you pause it not dipping uh, up or down or anything like that. So shoot for symmetry between your top and your bottom. And I can't really talk and do this at the same time because this takes too much of my focus. So that is our finished Mega Jerk. Ta-da! Oh, you can't see it. It's over here. <laughs> that is our finished Mega Jerk. Uh, this one's a probably 11 inches um, you can see, <clears throat> I'll turn off this autofocus real quick. You can just, yeah. You can see how tall, how bulky that head is, but it's super thin, uh, profiled fly, and that strung fuzzy fiber, we're allowed to shape that and create that super tall head, and you'll see this in the, in the fish tank here in a second. That head won't collapse, whatever, it'll hold, it'll hold that, that true shape right there, so. That is our, our finished Mega Jerk. So you guys can watch this guy swim here for a second. I'll tell you, you know, what's different. I, I kind of said I'd talk about it at the end here. Um, <clears throat> and so that, that hackle tail is basically it gives it a lot of life. Uh, it, it, it moves and shimmies and shakes all the time. Uh, great action to it and it's not adding any water weight. Uh, it swims a little bit better on the strip uh, and also kind of gives you a broader silhouette when the fly turns, right? So we have a hackle tail and, and because of the hackle tail I added and kind of stumbled upon the using that faux buck tail for the base um, and that's been awesome. Uh, really helps give the tail structure support, uh, stops everything from following. Um, so that's kind of perfect the way it is, right? The back hook, we, we moved from a a 2 out light stinger up to a 4 out predator stinger, right? Uh, a little bit better for, well, one, chasing predators, right? You got a little bit beefier, uh, heavier hook there. 
um, but it also helps keel the back. It helps keel the fly overall, gives it a little bit more mass so that it propels forward and jerks really nice. Uh, the front hook, you know, we added a little bit of keel weight. Um, keeps it stable and faster current, adds a little bit more momentum, reduces energy loss to belly wobble, right? And then the biggest thing is that epoxy head uh, and that strong fuzzy fiber head, which holds its shape super well. A uh, nice, tall, broad head, um, absolutely perfect. You can see how, just look at that silhouette, that head is so tall, uh, gives it a nice sail. Um, if your head's too tall, you can always trim it a little bit while you're on the water. Um, if, if it's having tr trouble riding uh, steady, uh, you can trim that down, but that five minute epoxy head gives it some mass, uh, gives it some serious durability, uh, helps it break through surface tension so that you're, this is hitting and stripping and, and being animated immediately. Um, and I really like, it's an extra step, but I like blending that strung fuzzy fiber with uh, wing and flash. You can, you can see the, the light reflectance in the head is, is a really cool uh, thing to have. Um, and this thing is just dancing, like it's just, it moves. It's got some nice shoulders to it now. Uh, that Supreme hair in the brush adds some serious shoulders, which helps push water. And the, the wing stacks, I basically only use SF now, um, just because it's the easiest to get, and it's it's quite perfect for this, actually. it's The whole thing, I mean, you, you shake that once, and it sheds all of its water, and it's good to go. So That's the Mega Jerk. Thanks for watching. And uh, tie some up because you will not regret it. Yeah. Oh, the other thing is that 180 pound articulation chain, right? That way we got the, the durability factor instead of 40 pound wire so thanks for watching